Christmas too, I think. All right, so I'm here with Chris Aiken, director of Shortcom Film Festival, of which Cinetopia is collaborating with on their industry day and networking events. Chris, welcome to Cinetopia's podcast. Thank you for having me. Um, so tell me a little bit about the history of the Shortcom Film Festival. Okay, so started when I was studying my MA in screenwriting in Salford. But maybe 2013, I think. I should really actually learn the history <laughs> when I started doing things. But um, so it kind of came about because some of the people that I studied with um, were various kind of filmmakers in their own right. One was a kind of director, cameraman. One was a uh, actor and I was very much don't want to be behind, I don't want to be in front of the screen, so I was a writer. So I did a funny little sketch. Um, when I say funny, it got a laugh from people, so it, I think it was funny. Um, and did a thing in Salf uh, Salford and Manchester, um, a little film night. Um, I've, the names escaped me right at the minute, but it was a nice kind of like a lot of kind of local filmmakers amateur filmmakers that came in you just had your film on a dvd no one knew what was going to get played and um it was in the place called deaf institute in manchester and it's a nice big kind of screen uh, nice little lovely atmosphere and my film played it was nice uh got a laugh and then some of the other films that played it was a kind of mix of genres um so it was a weird kind of it was i mean a great environment but in terms of just seeing how the films played out and just in terms of the tone etc it just didn't kind of fit uh for me anyway so and then like with this kind of film um that we had so the next thing is it's like well what do i do with it um and i mean kind of the obvious answer is it goes on the internet but then you don't really know who's watching it and how they're kind of reacting i mean with youtube yes there's a like button and a thumbs down button but you don't know quite where people are kind of either laughing at the moment what bits they might appreciate um and so my whole thing was that i think um i didn't know any kind of film festivals that kind of did comedy so i kind of started my own little program uh and i can't i think yeah short com the name just came from short film comedy uh, I thought it was a good kind of like bridging of the two words. It turns out that uh, it also <laughs> is abbreviated, it's short for short communications, mm -hmm. which a lot of uh, companies in Hong Kong wanted to buy the website of me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't realize I kind of struck gold with a name, but <laughs> <laughs> I should have sold it, but I've kept it. Um, but yeah, I then I, th I think I put a post on shooting people uh, calling for um, short comedy films and I got a great response uh, lots of kind of like a lot strong kind of films and I managed to put a package together a program together rather and screened at the Frog and Bucket comedy club in Manchester and yeah it went well and just decided to kind of carry on from there uh, just kind of got like increasingly kind of bigger uh, didn't particularly have a home for it. Um, I so I think I came back to Edinburgh to kind of live, and and I kind of screened it in Edinburgh now and again. Screened it in London at the Pleasance Theatre. Uh, then yeah, it's just kind of grown from there, and I've kind of come to understand a little bit more how film festivals work, uh, and just had to like learn a lot of skills in terms of basically doing everything that uh, makes a film festival uh, and then in terms of like branding, marketing, uh, engaging with filmmakers and talent uh, and venue owners, etc. So yeah, it just kind of, it grew interest and there was a big demand as well for um, people who had comedy films and wanted to be in a kind of comedy film festival because some people said to me as well, like I experienced is that they would put their film in a film festival and the film would just feel out of place or would get lost um, just because it wasn't, it just didn't marry with the programs that they were in. And also 
what I've always kind of wanted to be is that my rumour is that the film's um, most important thing is that they're funny and that they make people laugh. So you, there's a big mix of kind of like levels of production. So some are quite amateur, um, just done on a kind of DSLR, and then some of them are kind of like got big budgets as well. So there's a good mix, and it's just nice to kind of have them all packaged. Great, and I was going to ask, you touched a little bit on it, um, but why why comedy? Uh, you, you, you do write for comedy right now, right? Is that that's yeah. what you sort of um, In terms of my default, in terms of writing screenplays and writing stories, but I find comedy really easy. Um, writing drama is quite hard. It, I think if you probably ask drama writers, they probably find writing comedy hard, so I've just kind of got my brains that way around. Um, and I see just see comedy everywhere and I mean I love the genre as well I kind of was brought up in it there was a lot of great sitcoms and uh, sketch shows uh, when I was growing up um, I, I mean I've got certain opinions about how comedy is now um, so I think intuitively I'm that's kind of where my brain is geared towards writing wise um, I also think I'm a good judge of comedy uh, I just have good, good instinct for it and I think that's kind of been received well by the people that kind of, uh, well, audiences particularly in terms of that have come to see Shortcom and uh, and I, they've kind of laughed where I expect them to laugh. So I kind of feel validated by my sense of judgment. So, so who are some of your um, your comedy icons then? Um, in terms of uh, as writers, performers, actors, or. Perhaps writers, perhaps directors, yeah. perhaps, you know, s sitcoms that you've, like you said, you really yeah. sort of admire. Um, I mean, Charlie Kaufman is my kind of, in terms of myself as a writer, that's who I kind of want to uh, be my version of kind of Charlie Kaufman, uh, which is a <laughs> massive, uh, yeah, leap, because, yeah, he's pretty much, the, the, I mean, he's very much his own brand. Yeah, he's, he's somewhat maybe exception to Woody Allen but who wants to mention him now um with Charlie Kaufman he's the first kind of screenwriter where it's the his name as you could say Sorkin as well but Kaufman's is the most kind of prominent name on the films that he does um probably more so than the directors which is very unheard of in kind of just the film landscape uh so him um Sitcom comedy wise, I mean, Father Ted was uh, probably st maybe still is one of my favorite sitcoms. Um, so that's Grim Linehan and Arthur Matthews. Um, and then I uh, loved sketch shows like The Fast Show. I loved, um, I also grew up with um, Red Dwarf, I was a big fan of. Uh, Reeves and Mortimer, uh, which is kind of off kilter. Um, um, yeah, odd beats, just nonsense, daft. Uh, I'm quite, I quite like dark, visceral stuff as well. So I love the thick of it, and Amanda with kind of iron it. She's just brutal dialogue. Um, so, but in terms of, I kind of got a wide taste in comedy. Mm -hmm. um, we know we both don't agree on Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, I, I mean, I asked about, as that when does Seinfeld get good? Right, and I somebody so. said the third series, and and then there used to be a rule with kind of sitcoms. I mean, America is different, and then Britain, the sitcom, kind of the rule of like how a sitcom becomes popular was that it used to, they used to give it free series before um, somebody people got used to the characters, um, and uh, because it's knowing and liking the characters that really makes what is a good sitcom, yeah. um, and so the rule was that. Uh, yeah, you get free series, but in America, you obviously, you have I think what twelve to twenty-two episodes per mm -hmm. per, and um, yeah, <laughs> when people tell me it's like oh, it gets good in season three, and I'm like, I'm not watching forty-four episodes of something to just not like <laughs> before I go. Okay, this is fine. Fair enough. Yeah. And and there's a kind of I have a slightly brutal stance in terms of so as a writer, like the kind of general rule is that when you submit a script to someplace that. Um, you get, they say, 10 pages, which is 10 minutes on screen. Uh, I think the reality is that you probably get judged on the first page. But so my mentality as well is that when I'm watching something, 
if I don't engage with it, if I don't find anything about it in the first 10 minutes, uh, then I probably might stop watching. Because um, I feel like, well, that's you get the same rules as that I get. So <coughs> usually, I mean, I gave Seinfeld more than 10 minutes. but <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, so, so Edinburgh, um, you're bringing Shortcom back up here, correct? Yeah. And in August, which obviously is comedies, the central yeah. comedy. But why do you, wh what do you see with this sort of fitting within the festival sort of schedule or, you know, things like that? Like, how do you think it, why did you choose this? Um, I mean, it's a... Uh, I mean, it's, it's a somewhat excellent time in terms of like, I mean, you've got massive visiting audiences from around the world that um, not always here for comedy, but yeah, there's a, like a massive influx of uh, people that love comedy. So there's the audience thing. There's a lot, so a lot of talent, um, various kinds, and there's a lot of kind of industry um, people going around as well. So kind of makes perfect sense I mean, to kind of have it. I mean, the two kind of drawbacks is, is that you're in competition with lots of kind of performers, uh, different festivals happening. Um, accommodation is also um, quite toxic at the minute in terms of just how expensive it is to get here. Um, so those are two things that I have to fight against. Um, but I think for all the kind of positives that are here, and it makes sense. I mean, the... Edinburgh Film Festival used to be on during during August, and I think it lost a lot of kudos as soon as it as it left um, August as well. And I also know that people would come visit Edinburgh not just for the Fringe Festival, International Festival, but the Film Festival as well. Mm. And so, and because the film kind of left, I think it, there was well, I know that record numbers of people are coming, but I kind of feel like there's certain people that are not coming anymore. Right because the film festival's not here. So yeah. so I kind of want to fill that gap a little bit, but I'm very aware that I'm a certain genre of film, and so that is its own niche as well. Um, and, al and also my kind of goals and aims with the festival is that so ideally from next year, branch out into feature films and TV pilots, as well as having the shorts program, so we kind of expand the festival. Uh, and Edinburgh is such a kind of like internationally renowned city, um, and again, it massively makes sense to kind of have it here. Uh, Lazily, I'm from Edinburgh, yeah. <laughs> so I should be able to get free accommodation for myself <laughs> <laughs> there you go. and have it. Yeah. So I mean, like Edinburgh is massively spoiled for choice in terms of like not always all year round, but always has something going on, like mm -hmm. some sort of big festival as well. Um, and it, I mean, it's kind of got the infrastructure for it as well. Um, and yeah, I just feel like there's a lot of reasons to yeah, kind of no, have totally, it and do it. It totally does make sense. And where, tell me a little bit about what the plans are this year. So you have an event on the 12th, you have an event on the 15th, and, and who, you know, wh who's going to go to what, you know? Uh, okay, so yeah, they're somewhat s separate. In terms of the 12th, it's the screening at the Cameo Cinema. Um, which is my favorite cinema in Edinburgh, and it just kind of fits because in terms of like the cinemas in Edinburgh, you've got one film that's very arty, then you've got kind of more commercial cinemas, and Cameo is kind of historic, uh, and it's also kind of culty, so it kind of is a perfect fit for what I'm doing. Um, and so on the 12th, it's the uh, screening of our short submissions that we had this year, so it's the shorts program. Um, and so that's a collection of films that were sent to us through submission platform that we have on Film Freeway that, uh, and we picked out of uh, close to 150 films. Um, I, th I think I'm up to about 14 films, I think it was. Um, so we're aiming around about 80 minutes of content of uh, various short films. So that's, yeah, 12th. It's our kind of shorts program from there. Uh, the next night, um, still hoping to make it happen, is that I'm looking to screen um, one of my favorite comedy films that I've seen in the last kind of decade, uh, Thunder Road by Jim Cummings, which mm. had um, kind of, it's done this kind of festival run. It's also kind of not, it was recently released as well. 
but Jim Cummins is uh, someone that he came up through making really good short comedy films. Uh, so he's like he's kind of like the idol in terms of what I look for and want for people that are making short films in terms of like making good short films, getting traction and then making the feature film, making the kind of independent feature film. So uh, at the minute, I'm just trying to negotiate. Try, well, we've kind of got programs uh, to have the feature film, but trying to get some of his short, trying to screen some of his short films along with a kind of video introduction. So ideally, that is going to think happen on so the 13th at 6 p.m. again at the Cameo, uh, and then on the 15th, which is our so that in part of like how I'm looking to expand short com, is our kind of. Uh, I've, I've somewhat done an industry day before when I was part of the Glasgow Short Film Festival. Um, so it's an industry day, or uh, it's a series. It's just <coughs> a few kind of master talks uh, classes. Uh, starting off with um, Ben Malaby, who is um, a good friend, but he's also a BAFTA nominated uh, director. He made a so he's one of the first people to kind of submit to Shortcom, and he's just been a kind of very reliable person in terms of like always having great films and great and working with good people uh he's a film lecturer uh he's made countless short films he's constantly trying to get other sitcoms and so i was in those talks and feature films so uh he's kind of like perfect person to just do a kind of like master class and kind of how to kind of probably enhance your short comedy filmmaking skills uh and then I've got Maura McKinnon who's going to do a talk about her kind of career as a as a film director. Um, I mean, so she's as she said to me, she's not comedy per se, but um, she's very kind of cinematic and filmic. Uh, she is a BAFTA award winning. But, um, so when I studied started studying screenwriting, uh, one that we saw short films, and one of the short films that we saw that I really liked was hers, uh, called Home and uh it's kind of always stuck with me and she also she went on to make a feature film called donkeys uh which was a, a scottish kind of independent film uh which was a weird kind of hybrid of it was comedic and comedy but it was also dark as well um I, f I think we'll talk about that with her um i don't expect everyone to come to the class to have seen the films but um so very much uh, looking forward to just talking about her career um, as a kind of like, uh, as a well, particularly as a female director uh, working in a country that doesn't make many films. Uh, and then who else? I've got Stuart Laws, who is, uh, he's a stand-up comedian and also he runs his own production company that he started with some friends as soon as he left school. Uh, his company is called Tur Turtle Canyon Media who have these kind of sub series Total Canyon Comedy, Total Canyon Film, and he does corporate work. Uh, and he's worked with, lo like, he works with a lot of comedians down in London. Uh, he's made countless short films. He lets, he pretty much just lets the comedians have their vision uh, and make their films. And his studio, he, his production company is based in Pinewood. Uh, but anyway, he's come to talk about how he set up his production company and uh yeah kind of giving uh guidance in terms of like what he's learned along the way, along the way of running a production company that's still going and so um the the 12th and 13th obviously that's public anyone can mm -hmm. come to that um who who are you interested in sort of coming to your industry day and so on the 15th it's very much people it's a mix of kind of talent in terms of so it's emerging filmmaking talent uh and maybe actors, writers as well, performers, uh, writers. So very much a mix in terms of, because ideally the talks are there for people to learn, but also like the people in the room, what sometimes is more important about these kind of networking days is who you meet and who you potentially collaborate with uh, down the line. So i uh, got a decent mix already of a uh, mix of kind of writers and performers that have kind of applied to kind of come along um so yes if you, now the kind of remit is is that you've either made films you've started to make films it doesn't necessarily mean they have to be comedy mm -hmm. um but you've started to show that you've 
uh, started making steps to making feel like that you in terms of filmmaking as an independent filmmaker. Right. So and if you maybe collaborate with people as well. Okay. So uh, yes, and that's uh, and the kind of remit for that as well. Part of our aims with Shortcom is that we want to encourage people to be independent filmmakers but very much outside of London mm -hmm. um, and so the kind of remit for the people that are either they come in to to um, be delegates at this kind of ma these mass classes are based outside of London yeah well thank you so much Chris for being here and thank um, you. yeah so uh, there'll be more information on our websites and our social media as well and uh, we'll be doing a networking night around the I believe on the the 12th as well so yeah that'll be in the cameo as mm -hmm. well yeah so all right cool. well thanks again thank you